Using digital technology to enhance and evaluate interprofessional education. This project was delivered and developed by UCD and NUI Galway, and these are the partner names. Really, an overview in terms of the aim of the project was to implement and evaluate the impact of an online IP program designed to promote collaborative practice within undergraduate healthcare disciplines. And the principle underpinning it really was that if health professional students could learn together and work together, they would better be prepared really for collaborative practice and teamwork. Because a lot of the healthcare professionals are really, don't meet their other disciplines until they actually go out and practice. So it was trying to start that up of getting to know each other, getting their understanding of their roles and their professions and working collaboratively. They were the principles underpinning it. We ran two pilots, and this is just a refresher. Pilot one was 2014-2015. We had 166 students, and at that stage we were using the Value Exchange Network online system. And it really, the focus of the program really was on values and ethics. Um, and at that stage, only nursing students were receiving any credits for the program. We re-evaluated the program, and then we pilot two in 2015-2016, and we had 231 undergraduate students, again between UCD and ourselves. The content this time focused on roles and responsibilities, communication and teamwork, which were the key criteria of interprofessional learning, and we used a new online platform called Curator. And the big plus was that all students except medicine actually at that stage got 2.5 ECTS, ECTSs. So actually they were getting credit. They were the major, major, if you like, changes between the two program. In terms of um, what we found when we did the second pilot, or what we did rather, we developed and evaluated the program. Um, we delivered it using Curator. We created student and facilitator handbooks specific in relation to the Curator program. And we also did an introductory training video on how to navigate the system. Because some of the issues that we had come from the previous evaluation were to do with difficulties with user face and difficulties with navigating the system. So we improved the system, the evaluation the last time around, really through 57 interviews with students and facilitators, 12 facilitators. Um, really, the students and staff reported more positive experience overall in pilot two. They found that the system was easier to navigate. They found that the students really engaged more than they had done the previous time. And there was evidence of clear understanding of each other's roles. And that really, both the staff and the students overall enjoyed the learning experience by working uh, on a curator. So overall, we felt it had done well. That was the presenting. I'm just giving a summary. I have already presented this in March. It's just a summary of, of the results. So what we did since March. In terms of our, our project was a one-year project. And uh, the National Forum graciously gave us an extension on two, two lines of the budget. One is in relation to developing the curator platform, and the other was in relation to promotions and publications. And the good news is we'll be returning 26,000 of our monies actually to the forum um, um, at the end of, at, well at now basically. <laughs> what we did then was we continued to work, and I suppose this actually links in with sustainability when we come later on, we've continued to work on the project with UCD, we've modified curator. One of the issues we had with curator was it doesn't allow you to give direct student feedback online like Blackboard, if those of you are familiar with Blackboard. So we actually developed um, a system in Curator where, we, where, the, where the facilitators could actually upload their feedback and the students would automatically see it direct. So it was a much clearer way of doing it. So we've done that. Uh, we also developed two videos specific for the program in relation to um, really looking, it's, it's to do with uh, two people who had cerebral palsy and they actually told their story of the difficulties they had when they decided that they wanted to actually have a child and the preconceptions that people had about their ability to actually go ahead and have a child on their own and this was people were saying to them that they were senseless and what were they doing and that was the first video where they talk about she talks the lady talks about being pregnant and and the different concerns and worries she had and the fact that her own cerebral palsy was a result of a um, a, a birth injury and how concerned she was and the the fear of actually the baby being taken away from her and her rights being infringed upon 
and the students were given that initially and they were asked what would they do if, you know, in this scenario should actually uh, Sarah, as a lady's name, should Sarah actually be allowed to look after the baby in her own at home or actually should really somebody step in and, and you know, should she be cared for and really is this, is this really somebody being um, reckless as it were. And the students commented on that and they took a position. And then we showed them the second video where she's had the baby and the, baby, and the child now is four years old. And her, what actually, her fears, what actually happened, how well she managed after coming home from hospital, and really this, that didn't, the fear of the public health nurse coming in and taking over, that the OT coming in and taking over, and still maintaining their independence and able to manage on their own. And the whole notion of civil liberties and equality and rights and being treated the same. And it was interesting, the students were then asked, would you change your opinion from what you said in the first, now that you know the full story? And a significant number of the students said that they would now look at it differently, that yes, they would change their op opinion. Whereas previously they had said, no way should this person be left on their own. The, these two couple cannot cope. We need to put structures in place. The OT needs to go in. The public health nurse certainly must be going in on a regular basis. And then when they heard the story afterwards, they said, gosh, I never looked at it like that before, or seeing it from the other perspective. So it was really quite good in terms of challenging. That's just a snippet. There were other things in relation to it, but that was just a snippet in relation to that, those two, vi two videos. The final assessment we changed is based on a group presentation. We tried wikis, you may remember the last time around, and really it, it, it just didn't work. So this time around, what we did was, every week, we got the students to actually, they're doing it at the minute, it's not finished. We have the students do a presentation on key on five key points that they have to agree as a group. Now, you, you may remember the groups are interprofessional. So there are mixed groups and they're also mixed across institutions. Mm -hmm. So they have to work together to actually develop the key points that they want to talk about in relation to that presentation. We haven't marked that presentation, but we give them detailed feedback. And then in week now, the end, they actually have to do a group presentation which between the, uh, the whole group that they've been working on based on some of the principles that they've covered and got feedback on each week. And they have a choice, they can upload it as a video that they've created between each other, or they can do it as a, an, um, a voiceover with, with PowerPoints. Wh whichever way they choose. So we're expectantly waiting to see what we're actually going to get from the students. Um, but they, they seemed actually, I was just saying it to, 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 to one of the other colleagues here was saying that, you know, some of the facilitators were a bit concerned about leaving it so open, you know, gosh, should we really pin it down and maybe we'll get them to write an essay and that, that we'll get them to do that. So anyway, we managed to convince everybody, let's give them a chance and see what they, see what they actually come up with. Um, I think they'll probably surprise us, but um, so we'll see. The other main thing that we managed to achieve, which is a really good, we managed to get credits for medical students. They hadn't had credit before and they now will have credit for this. Um, the credit, it, it'll work differently for them in that the credit is going to be a pay forward in that they do an elective module, they do a, sorry, a short service module in, their, in year four of their program and if they do the IPL they'll get their credits for that So because we couldn't change the curriculum uh, but hopefully we will change it for next year but the great thing is that they actually got credits. Okay, looking at the impacts. We have two papers presented at the 16th Healthcare Interdisciplinary Research Conference in Dublin in 2015, paper presented at the Social Care Annual Conference in 2016, papers presented at the Altogether Better Health in September, um, poster at the EdTech Conference uh, in Limerick, a paper at the Eurosol Conference in Cork, and a paper at the CELT Annual um, um, Higher Education Symposium. A paper at the IPL Dublin 2015, the Health and Social Care and Professional Learning Conference in Dublin Castle. The other impacts have been the college IPL team is now firmly established. We started off a bit on shaky ground, but we're actually now much more firmly established um, within the college. And, and I report back at the college executive meeting every, what do, I think we've got two, th two or three meetings a semester in terms of the ongoing work that's been done. We've had discussions and presentations at college level with the Dean and with other disciplines. External examiners have been really interested in learning what we're doing and wanting to replicate it in their own institutions. Um, the professional bodies, such as the NMBI, the, the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland, the, um, the medical, what's the medical board? The 
Exactly. They had a review as well, and they were impressed with, the, with this initiative. So the, and the quality review panels looking at uh, the courses within the university, we just happened to have one last year, were very impressed with the fact that this initiative they saw as being really a trailblazer and should be done in other institutions. Um, also, it's impacted on clinical colleagues, because they've actually come back and said, I hear you're doing this, it's great, tell us more about it. Um, because really, the students are saying that they're, they're, they've been talking to some of the medical students before they actually, or the physiotherapy students, before they actually hit the clinical areas. So that's been positive as well. We've had facilitators report increased confidence and competence in online facilitation. I don't want to underestimate the, the challenge this can be to, and I myself am, I have to say that I'm not a techie person by any strength of the imagination, but for some people, building their confidence took a lot of work to keep them on board, to say it's going to be okay, we have the training, you can do this, and that actually was, was quite, it does take a lot of time. But when I was putting together this uh, for the report here, and I sent it around to them, and I was saying, well, you know, what do you want to say, is there anything, and I think, the majority of them, maybe there was one that I didn't get a response from, said, I actually have increased competence in using online, increased confidence, and also from the fact of being part of the IPL team, I feel I can, I ring up, and they do, like they'll ring up the phone, they'll talk to each other colleagues, because they actually, although we were in the same building, some people didn't know each other at all from the different disciplines. So that kind of has, it has helped to break down some of those barriers. So it's enhancing professional collaboration with other lecturers. Uh, IPL is a key element in design of new curriculum and at the moment we're undergoing a new curriculum as some of my nursing colleagues here will, will know in terms of developing that curriculum IPL is going to be a key part of that curriculum and it's also in terms of medicine who are also developing theirs speech and language developed their curriculum last year and they have put in IPL as a key element within theirs as well so it's getting more recognition and this has helped to do that um, Engagement and collaboration with health service users in developing the video material, which was really good. They were very keen. They knew what we were trying to do. And really, the, the, the video is really good in terms of, of trying to get the message across in terms of the roles of different professionals in caring for people with disabilities and not infringing on, on people's rights. The majority of students reported they enjoy the learning experience, better understanding of their roles when they meet in, in clinical areas, Student engagement was enhanced with the gamification aspect. They liked the fact that they had the XP points and they could see on the leaderboard um, how they were doing and, and they actually, that actually pr prompted engagement. We have two quantitative papers target, we targeted, one 1500 word, well the two 1500 word reports, one's on students' attitudes pre and post completion of online IP program and that draft, that finalised draft now is with the team was actually finished, it's not more or less finished, it's going to go to the Journal of Interprofessional Care and we will do a similar one with the evaluation survey results. We have a 5,000 word paper fully drafted, um, it's at its final draft uh, and it's with the team at the moment and that's for the interprofessional education, um, or the Journal of Interprofessional uh, Education, uh, Interprofessional Care as well. This one actually is the overall, it's the facilitators and the barriers in relation to um, um, online IP program. So the monies that we had left, that we, we asked for the extension for, um, this is a, an open access journal, so we'll actually be using the fees to actually pay for the, um, uh, for the costs of those. In terms of impact on organizational practices and systems, there is really a strong commitment to IPL now within the college. Um, and actually I have had other disciplines like social care asking, can, you know, social workers or other, can we actually, how do we come on board, can our students really value, um, and I'm going, yes, that's great, and I'm going, oh my God, how am I going to do this? But anyway, it, it, it's really positive in that sense. Uh, it's now one of our strategic aims within the college, not just for each of the school disciplines, but actually across the, the, the College of, of Medicine, Nursing and Health Sciences. We have administrative support supplied by the college, and that's how we were able to continue running the program. That's now in place and the plan is that it will continue, and we have increased uh, collaboration across the disciplines. Um, in terms of culture, the impact is there's a commitment to IPL disciplines timetables, so they're actually looking to see every year now where it is occurring in the timetable and giving it a priority, because one of the key challenges was for us at the beginning trying to find a place for it to belong in the timetables and trying, because some of the people on the IPL committee, they're not the module leaders of the particular module that's being delivered. So trying to argue their stance that actually we want to keep this when something else kind of 
ju ju you know, jiggles in has been a challenge, but, but actually th this year we had no problem. Other disciplines wanting to get involved, and we've had approach from UL, they would like to now join this initiative um, online. The only problem we have is that they use Moodle as opposed to, so we need to, we need to, to look at that. Um, my other colleague from UCD, who was the lead from UCD, Tara Magdalinski, she has moved to Australia. And she's saying, let's run it from Australia and let's put it on. I'm thinking, well, the time difference is going to make that a challenge. So we'll see what we can do. Um, there's a recognition that online may make IPL possible. One of the things and the challenges in interprofessional learning has been to do with the fact that you've got large numbers, the timetabling, and actually the resources to get people um, in the same space at the same time, making IPL really a non-runner. But people, even though this was a small initiative, there is now recognition actually you can make a difference if you do an online program that actually can deliver you uh, a better um, interprofessional learning experience for students. There's much more discussion on campus re-IPL. Uh, certainly in terms of locally, I've been invited to talk to different disciplines about how we managed to get it up and running and, and, how, and how we implemented it. Sustainability, I, as I said, the funding ended in March. I think the sustainability in a way has already started. As you can see, we're still running the program. We're making plans for next year already uh, in terms of, uh, of some changes that we may like to make to the program, but we'll wait until, we, until, until it's finished. Um, admin support is in place and that will be in place going forward. There's a firm commitment by the IPL team who have become really IPL champions. They really have gone out and actually sold the IPL and in the, initially they really felt, well, I've been assigned to get on this committee by the head of school and I'm here because I was told to be here. But now, actually, it's, it's changed and they can see that this can really, that the students really, really like it. Uh, and I think that's what sold it, to be, to be honest. We're in the process of introducing a pilot half-day IPL simulated learning session in semester two, and that's going to occur in May. It's going to be, it's, we're going to do it as a pilot. Um, uh, a, a, a group of students, uh, about, I think we're looking at about 12 students and we're going to video them and we're going to try and see in terms of how that works and we've created, we've learned from our experience that the scenarios that we're, cre we're creating initially, you may remember they were too dynamic, we had the midwifery and there was a dementia patient and they couldn't link up between the two and we were trying to cater the scenarios for everybody in terms of we had a COPD, a guy coming in with COPD whose, <coughs> whose niece was with him but she was heavily pregnant. So that was to get the midwifery students involved. But they saw truth, you know, they said, oh, you know, what do I need to know about dementia? She's got, she's pregnant, so what? I can deal with that, but she's not the problem. So it was a bit of a difficulty and on the advice from the panel, they said, well, actually, you know, maybe you need to be more, develop the scenarios for the different groups and have different ones. And, and we've done that this time and we're going to roll that out now into the simulation uh, process and one of the one of the my colleagues actually on the back of the IPL put in for some funding to the local we have a millennium funding in NUIG and it gives you about 5,000 for start young early researchers so she actually put in a funding to research this part of the simulation so which is really great so we're going to have some funding from that to help to do some of the focus groups and some of the um, the um, the interviews and stuff like that so that that will be good so in terms of mapping to the key recommendations of the digital roadmap, there's no question it has built digital capacity in terms of, and in terms of the facilitators for sure, and myself for sure, in terms of being less daunted by curator and not, or even realizing that you know, pressing the button won't really cause everything to fall apart. It's okay, it, it'll be all right. And that actually the interface really important to have a, an, um, an easy to use interface and we've used our own experiences and maybe fears to help develop the curator system make it better um, we've engaged students as partners in the process they're actually involved in the in they were involved in the steering committee and they fed back to us ongoingly in terms of how they felt things were or were not working and we responded appropriately and as fast as we could in terms of what their concerns was Innovative design and use of space accommodating formal and informing learning opportunities. I suppose I interpreted this in terms of one of the things we found is that, and, and this is, the panel may have a different view on this, one of the things we found is that the students actually, um, when they were engaging this time around, a lot of them started to engage off the programme. Now, when I, when I mean by off the programme, they had the opportunity to meet face to face and we encouraged that, but they started doing it on Facebook. 
and actually engaging on Facebook. Um, some of my colleagues were horrified because they felt, and I, I, as I said, it may be the perception that I'd be interested in the panel's viewpoint, they felt, oh my God, we, we're not seeing the discussion, this is terrible. Um, you know, part of it, they should be doing it on Curator, it needs to occur there. My reaction was different, and I felt, well, isn't it great that they're talking and they're doing it on Facebook? Does it really matter? Do we really need to see the discussion? Because they have an end assignment anyway that they have to do. And if that is happening some space, is that not a good thing? So, but, so the jury's out, so I'd be interested to hear what people think. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Um, staff and students are more familiar and more at ease with the technology. We do have a little, you know, we run it in semester one. So it finishes at the end of semester one. So by the time it comes around to the next year, we do a little kind of a heebie-jeebies because it's a, it's a while since people have switched on curator and getting people familiar again. Um, that does happen, and I think that happens even with Blackboard, so it's, it's, it's no different. And contribution to a strong evidence base for enhanced uh, pedagogy, that's evidenced by the publications and the presentations that we actually um, have done and are in the process of actually hopefully getting published. And Basically, that's it.